Hey peeps, before we get into this video, I just want to give a quick disclaimer that this video talks about self-harm and suicide, so if you're sensitive to that, then feel free to skip this video. I have a more cheerful video in the pipeline, so you can look forward to that. This video will also discuss major plot points for the Three Days of Happiness and reference the Heart of Buddha's teaching. If you wish to read either of these books before continuing the video, then I'll leave links to the respective Amazon pages in the description. With those disclaimers out of the way, let's get started. Knowing when to say goodbye and saying goodbye to something or someone is difficult. You think it'd get easier the more you do it. Quite the contrary, it only gets tougher, but you know it's something that has to happen. If there's a book that touches on this topic the most, it would be Three Days of Happiness by Suguru Miyaki. The book is 15 chapters in total, with a length of 168 pages, so it's not very long, and I recommend you read it for yourself, but the idea for the book is this. Kusunoki is a broke college student who doesn't have any money to buy food. While selling off some of his books and CDs to get some money, he is told of a place where he can sell his lifespan for money. Despite his skepticism, he goes to the building and runs into a businesswoman who would like to know what he wants to sell, as he can actually sell three different things. Lifespan, which means he'd sell actual years off his life, so if he would normally live until he's 60 and he sold off five years, then he'd only live until he's 55. Time, which means he'd work for the company, but instead of a traditional 9 to 5, he'd be working constantly until that time is up. And health, which means he'd physically get worse in exchange for money. Kusunoki decides to sell his lifespan, and that's when he's hit with a bombshell that he only had 30 more years left to live, and for all 30 years, he'd receive 300,000 yen, which is roughly $30,000 in America. That is it per year. That is $30,000 for 30 years of his life. For any non-Americans watching, if you were to work a minimum wage job here in the US, you'd get about $15,000 annually. The average salary in Japan, according to online sources, is 4,530,000 yen, which roughly translates to $41,000 in the US. Of course, inflation and the decreasing value of the Japanese yen have fudged the numbers a bit, but it's easy to tell just how little value Kusunoki's life had. Even though he'd be receiving very little for his life, he decided to sell off all but three months of his life. I could continue to explain the whole book, but what we need to see for the sake of this video's title is Kusunoki's bucket list. Just like anyone who knows their life is coming to a close, they make a list of things they want to do before they complete their journey. His list goes as follows. Don't go to college. Don't work. Don't hold back when you want something eat something delicious, look at something beautiful, write a will, meet with Naruse and talk, meet with Himino and tell her how you feel. It's a pretty simple list compared to what other people put on their bucket list, but I can't judge someone based on how they choose to spend their remaining days. Heck, I'd probably have a similar list with a few additional things like replaying my favorite video games, rereading my favorite books, playing soccer with some friends, and more. But before Kusunoki can even put his pen down, Miyagi, his monitor who works for the company, warns him not to meet with Himino. Himino was Kusunoki's childhood friend, but things have changed a lot since she moved in her high school years. She got pregnant, married, and divorced a year later. Kusunoki visiting her would only make things worse. Despite Miyagi's warning, Kusunoki continues to do what he wants. The first thing he does is call his one and only friend he made at college, and that is Wakana. Wakana bonded with Kusunoki over books and even flirted with him, but Kusunoki had made a promise with Hamino that if they were still single in their 20s, then they would get together, so he declined Wakana's advances. They slowly fell out of communication until now, but Wakana didn't answer the phone. That's when Miyagi chimes in. The girl you just tried to call was your final hope. Wakana was the last person who might have loved you. If you had given her a second thought in the spring when she hit on you, I think you would have been lovers in a close relationship now. The value of your life probably wouldn't have fallen as far, but you were too late. Wakana doesn't care about you anymore. In fact, she resents you now for not returning her affection, and she wishes she could show you the boyfriend she currently has. Kusunoki gets a call back from Wakana, but after hearing what Miyagi said and knowing how Wakana really feels, he notices just how hollow her pleasantries are and decides to let her go. Two chapters later, he finally crosses something off his bucket list. He goes to a restaurant where he's supposed to meet Naruus. Naruus was Kusunoki's friend in high school. They'd go to fast food joints and just talk about whatever they wanted. Kusunoki wanted to have that same feeling yet again. A few minutes pass and Naruus shows up at the restaurant. They begin to chit chat like they used to in high school. During the conversation, Naruus brings up one of of Kusunoki's old hobbies, which sours the conversation. The hobby in question is one of the main threads in this story, but for the sake of this video's topic, just know that it's a sore subject for Kusunoki. Miyagi chimes in again. You're a little disgusted with Naruus now, but as a matter of fact, Naruus does not like you as much as you think either. Originally, two years from now, you would meet him in a similar manner as this, and get into an argument over something trivial. An argument so bad that you would never speak again. You should probably break this off before too long. Nothing good 
good will come of putting your hopes in him. Kusunoki lashes out at Miyagi and leaves the restaurant. He reflects on the conversation and comes to the conclusion that Naruse changed and he didn't. In chapter 9 of the book, Kusunoki goes to visit Himino, but she isn't home. So he visits the local festival, only to run into Himino there. They make plans to have dinner with each other, and Kusunoki prepares himself for that day. He gets a haircut, buys some nice clothes, and visits an old place where he and Himino used to hang out. He practices something he wants to say to Himino with Miyagi. The greatest thing that ever happened to me was meeting you, and the worst thing was your leaving. Depending on your response, this moment will either be my new best or my new worst. We, as the reader, can discern where the pickup line was going. The day Kusunoki is supposed to hang out with Himino finally arrives, and they go to an Italian restaurant. They talk for a brief moment, and Himino excuses herself from the table. She never comes back. Kusunoki eats by himself, and as he's paying for the food, a waiter hands him a note saying, your fellow guests asked me to give this to you. Kusunoki takes the note and reads it. After he finishes reading the note, he realizes that everything Miyagi had said about Himino was a lie. The note reads as follows. To my one old friend, the truth is, I was going to die while you watched. I was going to have you wait at the bottom of that observation deck and fall right next to you. You might not realize it, but I have always loathed you. You never answered my cries for help, and yet now you show up out of the blue. I hate you. Once I became irreplaceable to you, I was planning to die, just to show you. But I can see that the last 10 years have driven you much more insane than me. My revenge would have little point now. Instead, I'm walking out of your life without a word. Goodbye. I hope your story about your life ending soon is true. Quite dramatic, I know, but this reveals that Miyagi lied to protect Kusunoki's image of Himino from shattering. The one person he loved for the past 10 years revealed that she hated him so much that she would kill herself in front of him. The book continues for five chapters, but we've seen enough for this video. Three times in the book, Kusunoki tries to rekindle something he once had. He's been holding onto these memories and feelings for 10 years. Kusunoki saved himself for Amino and rejected Wakana, only to turn to the girl he rejected after he found out the girl he was saving himself for had been married and had a child. He reconnects with Naruus only to find out they don't get along as well as they did in high school, which ruins the image he had of Naruus. He reconnects with Hamino only to find out she hated him all this time, destroying the image he had of his only friend from childhood. He tries to recapture those feelings, but ruins the things he once held dear. I feel like that is a relatable thing for everyone in some way. Maybe it's a reboot of your favorite cartoon, and yet it doesn't give you the same feeling as the original. Or maybe you've reconnected with a childhood friend that you haven't seen in years, only to realize you don't gel as well as you used to. Rather than let go, we try to hold on to those things with a death grip. The book, The Heart of Buddha's Teaching, says, Letting go gives us freedom, and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If in our hearts we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. I don't practice Buddhism, nor am I very knowledgeable on it, but I can somewhat empathize with the goal of letting go. I say somewhat because I don't know if I'm capable of letting go of the feelings I have when someone I know passes away. However, I can agree with the desire to learn to let go and know when to let go, because when you do, you realize all of the good things you have in the here and now that are overshadowed by past feelings. This happens to Kusunoki in the last five chapters of Three Days of Happiness, and as a result, the remainder of his life begins to turn around. But that's a topic for another video, so I'll leave you with this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye!